All right, in this video, I'm gonna be moving this plugin up the wall in my bathroom. And the reason I'm gonna do this is because I did get a new sink for this bathroom, new vanity, I guess, and it's got some granite ledge type stuff. And this plug is at about 38 inches. So if I measure the vanity, which is still kind of wrapped up here, you can see that it's about 33 and one quarter inch to the top or to the highest point where the actual countertop is gonna sit. And then the countertop is another five and a half inches. So that would be the backsplash and the countertop depth, which would bring it up to about 38 and a half, 38 and three quarters. So the bottom of the outlet cover is going to be in contact with the sink, which is not good. So I'm gonna go up 2.75 inches so I'm gonna bring the bottom of the outlet cover to 41 inches on the wall. I was gonna bring it one inch higher, but then I backed it down a little bit. So 2.75 inches vertical. And quick one for the thumbnail there, 2.75 inches. So the bottom piece should be there and that'll be at 41 inches off the floor. So as you can see, this is hot. If I trip the GFCI, it would kill the switch, but it wouldn't turn the power off necessarily from the breaker to the switch. So don't do that. You gotta go downstairs and turn off the breaker. Don't just trip the GFCI because the wires are still gonna be hot when you disconnect things, or they could be. And you can see that there's no more power going to this outlet. So I do put a great deal of this video in fast motion. And first thing I'm gonna do is pop off the outlet cover, pull the outlet out of the box after that, disconnect the hot wire, which is black, disconnect the neutral wire, which is the white one, and then disconnect the ground, which is the bare wire. If you're not confident with working with any of the electric devices in your house, maybe this isn't the job for you, but if you're confident with it, this isn't too hard. So you can see everything there. This is coming from the top down. It's actually not coming from the top down, it's coming from the side over, but it looks like it's coming from the top down. So that makes it easier to go up. If it was coming bottom up, you could run into an issue where you couldn't raise it very much or very easily, but I think I have enough wire in here that even if it was coming from the bottom up, I would still be able to raise it that 2.75 inches. There's quite a bit of extra wire in here. But again, it's coming top down, so it's not an issue to raise it up. It should be very easy. So now I'm gonna cut the drywall to give myself a space to move the outlet up. You can see that I'm just using the ruler portion of my little square there, lining it up with the existing hole, and then just carrying that line up. And then obviously I'm just going up 2.75 inches and I'm gonna draw another line so I know what to cut out. And with the lines drawn out, I'll just grab the utility knife and then just start scoring the lines up. Now obviously you do wanna be a little bit careful I would be reluctant to use a saw that punches right through because there is that wire that's running vertically behind that drywall. So I do take my time with it and then just be careful not to hit the wires behind the drywall. Pretty simple. Before I cut all the way through, I do give it a, a smack with the back of the knife and it pops through no problem and I did not cut the wires. And that's the hole that I got going on. I actually don't think that that wire is stapled to the two by four. So I do take the utility knife and just open it up a little bit more just because that bottom nail is a little bit tough to get at with just the way everything was sort of sitting. The drywall was really uptight. So giving myself an extra centimeter or two allowed me to get down to that nail a little bit easier. Now to get those nails out, I really just use a screwdriver and then I go to a chisel. I find the screwdriver is just a little bit flexy to begin with, but you can see that it starts moving. And then once I get a chisel in there, the chisel is obviously a lot stronger and doesn't flex out as much, but that starts moving the nails and eventually pops everything out. One thing I would say is it's a good idea to have an extra device box sitting around available when you do this. I wouldn't say I completely destroyed this one, but you can see that I've bent it up pretty good and I've decided that I'm not gonna try and salvage this one. I'll just drop a new one in because it's quite simple to drop a new one in as well now that I'm at this stage. This new one I got is a little bit bigger, but it's fine, it's gonna fit in there. 
So I'll just remove the electrical wiring from the device box. Pretty simple, just unscrew everything so that it can slide up and pull it out. And then I'm gonna toss the old device box straight down the wall and it'll just sit there for a future person to discover. I'll just slide the cabling into the new device box and tighten everything down. And then I'll connect the grounding wire to the device box as well. With all the wiring sort of hooked up, I'll just push the device box back into the wall. Obviously those little tabs on this one make it a little bit tighter, but they go as well. And then you gotta tuck those tabs in between the two by four and the drywall. So that's kind of the, the difficult part is it's tough to slide those two little metal wings in between the two by four and the drywall. But once it's in, it's good. For this, I'm using inch and a quarter screws. And then obviously I'm using a long drill bit to secure the device box to the wall. And then it has four points that you can use to screw everything in. If you wanted to use nails, you would obviously have to make a substantially larger hole to nail everything together. But anyway, I use two screws in the top, two screws in the bottom, and then I use the long bit to make sure that the drill doesn't have to uh, contact the drywall. Now I'm taking the utility knife and just making the hole underneath the device box a little bit larger, and that's so that I have the two by four exposed so that about half an inch of the two by four can contact the new piece of drywall that I'm gonna drop in there. So like I said, just clean it up, square it up. That's what it looks like. You can see I got a piece of two by four that I can screw into with the new drywall. And I just take a piece of scrap wood that I had kicking around in the garage. I don't know what this is. Maybe it's a one by two and a half. I don't know, it's just a, a little piece of maple that I had kicking around. So I'm gonna take some drywall screws and then just secure that maple to the, the drywall from the backside. Obviously you gotta hold it in place or it'll just push out. And I secure that with three screws. So that gives me lots of wood to screw into and I just toss a few screws into the two by four as well. That's the acting as the wall stud here. And that'll help make sure that the drywall doesn't move around. Now it's not too important, but the piece of drywall that I'm gonna cut out and install is gonna be two and a half inches by two and three quarter inch. And I just go downstairs into the basement, cut it up and there it is just like magic. And I'm gonna drop that in and screw four screws in there so that it's gonna be secure to the stud by two screws and then secure to that maple piece that I tossed in with another two screws, pretty simple. I do come back and fix that top right screw because it is at a funky angle. So I do pull that one back out and toss a new screw in. Anyway, that's it, everything's secure. Now I'm gonna take some drywall compound or drywall mud. I'm gonna to toss that on the wall and really just a scratch coat just to get some of the mud into all the cracks and holes, cover up the screws, and that's about it. And then I'm going to let that dry for a while. And I'm going to reinstall the outlet before everything's finished. Obviously, I have kids and stuff, so I, I don't want them coming in and touching the exposed wires, even if it's not hooked up and the breaker's not on. I would just prefer to have everything uh, sealed up. So that's what I do. And then once the outlet and the outlet cover are on, I just leave it overnight so that it fully sets up and is dry. And you can see with the electrical tester, everything's hooked up right. And I'll finish off by throwing the cover plate on. Now I don't sand the first coat. I just come straight on top of it with a second coat of drywall compound, trying to go about four or five inches beyond the borders of everything. And then after that dries, I just use these 120 grit sanding sponges and sand down all the drywall mud. Once it's sanded down, I do take some more drywall compound and put it over the wall one more time, just to make sure that I've got all the divots all the cracks, screw holes, that kind of thing covered up well. And I don't end up pulling out the larger six or 12 inch trowels. I just use the, uh, the smaller ones. And that's the last coat. I do take the sanding block one more time. I don't use any of the, the shop vac or anything like that for this small area and just sand it until you can't really see 
any of the transitions and there's no little pock marks or holes or scratches in it. Just make it nice and smooth and make it match the wall. Once that's done, I take the paint that matches the wall. This color is called Classic Gray by Benjamin Moore. And it's a good paint. I think it looks good. Obviously this video has a whole bunch of different lighting because it's daytime, nighttime, all that kind of thing. But overall, I think the color looks good. And then I'll just take a small roller and roll out this section. Now I am going to come back and roll the entire wall a little bit later once the sink goes in and that kind of thing. I will do a final paint on the entire wall, but for now I'm just going to do this small section and it's, it's going to look good. Obviously it's a paint match, so it's all good to go. Test the wall, make sure it's not wet, and then I'm going to put on the outlet cover for the final time. making sure that the outlet screws are oriented in the same direction. And that's pretty much it. A little bit of a process. It didn't take that long overall. And in fact, it's pretty easy to do. It just takes a little bit of patience. It is difficult removing the nails that are in the old device box. That's probably the hardest part. But once those are out, it's pretty simple. Anyway, thanks for checking out my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.